You know, as they say, it's not so much the heat, it's the gosh darn humidity. And when it comes to whitetails, everything affects them. Heat and humidity, especially in today's age. This is Deer and Deer Hunting TV. You know, the whitetail species is thousands of years old and it is the most adaptable species that we know of. It can adapt to almost any climate. You're looking at the south, you're looking at the north, everywhere in between, the white-tailed deer has been wired to survive. The one thing that amazes me about whitetails, among many other things, is its ability to survive in really hot weather. I call it scorched earth because it seems lately these heat waves that we've had, especially in the southern part of the United States, and even other parts of the United States, but Texas is one. It is so hot. I mean, 100 degrees is a, you know, the standard for summer weather. How do deer survive this? In summer, they survive it just by being creative in how they use their environment. But when you get to fall, we, it seems that this hot weather has extended. And that's not gonna stop the whitetail from being the whitetail. They're still gonna rut, they're still gonna do the things that they do, but they have to learn how to do it under very adverse conditions. And there's no better example of these types of conditions than Southern Texas. Dan is no stranger to hunting Texas, but each time he does, he always adjusts his timing tactics enough to increase the odds of being in position when the deer start to move. This time around, he's at the Vatoville Outdoors Ranch near El Dorado. It's October with the rut in full swing. The grass a nice shade of burnt brown and the deer adapting to the heat in their natural leather coats. You know, whoever said God bless Texas, they sure know what they were talking about. I've been down to South Texas many times and I'm always taken in by the beauty. It's just a beautiful place on earth and it's a wonderful place to hunt whitetails. Wherever we've hunted this year, it's been warm. It's, it's a tad warm here in South Texas. I don't know what's gonna happen. I know we'll see deer. I don't know if we're gonna see the right deer, but let's see what happens. Coming up next, Dan encounters a nice eight-point buck on his first sit. Will he be able to restrain himself? I mean, this is Dan Schmidt we're talking about here. My guess is no, but you'll have to stick around to find out. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. If you haven't noticed yet, here at Deer and Deer Hunting TV, we like to get geeky about the behavior and biology of the white-tailed deer. It's kind of our thing. But staying true to our name, we don't just talk about deer, we always have a thing or two to say about deer hunting. And today, it's all about hunting whitetails in extreme heat. Today, I'm not going to talk so much about the behavior and biology of the whitetail as I'm going to talk about hunting deer in hot weather. When it is so hot, you have to reprogram your brain as a deer hunter to understand that deer still are going to be deer. During the rut, I've experienced this, especially in places like South Texas, that you're looking at 90, 95, 100, even higher degrees. Those deer are still going to be behaving how they're going to behave in late October, pre-rut, November, December, into January. That rutting behavior is going to be the same. How do I adjust as a hunter? I just have to adjust my mentality most of. I mean, yes, we can dress lighter. Obviously, we have to take much greater scent control tactics. That means spraying down everything. That means taking multiple showers a day in scent killer. I'm taking three, four showers a day when I'm hunting in this kind of weather because I can't stop sweating. And I know I'm not the only one. That's one thing. Scent is gonna be number one. Number two is the mindset in how am I gonna hunt these deer. Are they gonna be moving during the middle of the day? Yes, they are, but obviously most of that activity is gonna be on the fringe hours at daylight and dusk. And then adjusting my tactics, especially when I'm in the stand.
For me, this means getting into the stand earlier and leaving later. And that is a very big challenge when it comes to scent control because the longer I'm out there, the more I'm sweating, the more scent I'm putting out there. But these deer are going to be focusing, congregating, especially in those food spots, the does, are gonna be focusing early morning and late in the afternoon. They're gonna get there a little bit early, they're gonna leave a little bit later, and I can't be walking through those food areas when they're in them or they're moving through them. Hey. Hey, I'll admit, I'm blessed. I get to hunt across the country, and Texas, I really get excited. You know, Texas gets a bad rap. People think of Texas, especially if they've never hunted it, they think high fences and baiting. Well, there are high fences in Texas, and there is baiting in Texas, and you're gonna be hunting over food. But don't knock it until you try it, especially when you're hunting free-range deer. You know, they put out protein, and deer will come to that in feed, but you're not gonna see the whole picture until you're actually hunting that. And that's what really gets me excited because you see deer in their native environment. You see deer just wild, open, and free, and it's really, really cool. So our first sit, we get out there, and you know, there's bucks, there's does, there's fawns, there's young bucks, a couple older bucks, and it's really cool to see that. And all of a sudden, here comes a nice big eight pointer. Boy, my heart started hammering. But I have to temper my enthusiasm every time I do this because, you know, don't shoot the first deer you see, they always tell you that. And we, we, we relaxed, we watched him for a while, we studied him and we realized, uh, you know, studying that deer in relation to some of those other deer that are out there, he's a dandy buck, big bodied buck but not mature. I mean, he might have been three years old. He could have been four years old, probably not. That's not the type of buck they want to take out yet because they know that he could exhibit more in the years to come. Coming up next, Dan held back once. Can he do it again? <laughs> not a chance in hell, I mean Texas. Not a chance in Texas. Stay tuned. We'll take it. Humid this morning? Man. Yeah, it's muggy. Muggy, I didn't think it was going to be that sticky out. Well, I think the dew points are almost in the 70s. Wow. That's what's yeah, going that's on. High. Next set. It starts to get light, getting excited, put the binoculars up, see deer out in front of us already, don't know what they are, and it doesn't take too long here, okay, the sun's coming up, here come some deer, here come some bucks, we're looking around, put the glasses up, and here comes a really nice mature buck. He is right there. Hold on a second. Hold on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Just to be sure. He's gonna lay down. Yeah, he's gonna lay down. He's gonna lay down right there. He's dead. He's dead. We did it. Good job. Thank man. you, Ben. Yeah, great shooting. Good job. Oh man. Sonora, Texas. We're at Vadoville. That means Friendville. And we're hunting with friends. Steve and Michelle Anderson. This is an unbelievable piece of the country. I cannot describe it. It's free range. It's, when you think of Texas, this is Texas, and that is Texas. Oh, what a beautiful day.
he Look is at that a animal. Stud, man. That is fantastic. Here, let me get that again. Holy he's God. not quite rubbed out all the way, is no, he? No, he's got velvet. Look at those bases. Look at that. He wasn't even busted off. He didn't even grow that brow tank. Did he? Where's it busted? I think it's broke. It's broken up. Is he a dandy buck? Oh, oh, I'm telling you, beautiful color in that oh, horn. Oh, man, what a beautiful. Look at that. The gray in his face. That is fantastic. Awesome, Bob. Look at this mass all the way through the main yeah, beam. I mean, that some, is just fantastic. He's got beautiful, awesome mass. beautiful, beautiful time length. Wow. Great buck. Good job, bud. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you very much. You know, it doesn't get more exciting than that. When I was sitting in that blind, my heart is beating so hard. This deer's coming to food, but he's still thinking about those does that are in the area. And for me, it doesn't matter whether it's cold or hot or anywhere in between. I love hunting whitetails, but I especially love hunting them during the rut. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by When I first started hunting behind a camera, this was 20 years ago, I didn't know what I was doing. And it was a lot of, you know, learn as you go type of thing. One bit of advice that the late great Charlie Elsheimer gave me is, if you're gonna try to film yourself hunt, you know, you have to invest in some decent equipment. And I had not done that originally. I was using stuff actually from the local drugstore. You might have found like these, these camera arms at the local department store. They weren't very good and you really couldn't get the job done with them. Things started changing for me and I was more successful in filming my own hunts when I got a better camera arm like this Muddy Outfitter arm. This is a nice arm. Basically what you need when you're hunting is you have to have that camera away from you. And there's a couple things you have to keep in mind that aren't even camera related when you're trying to film your hunt. Number one, you have to limit your shots because you're, a lot of times that deer shows up behind you, I'm not gonna be able to get turned around, get that camera on him, or if he's coming through fast, something like that. So what I do is I pick a couple lanes. If I'm hunting, filming myself, and I know I wanna get this on film, I want to make sure that, okay, I'm either, you know, let's, let's, let's just say I'm up in the stand here, I got a lane there, I got a lane there, and I'm gonna set that camera arm about at waist level so I can adjust it here as I'm watching the deer, as I've got my bow ready, or if I'm gun hunting, and I can just adjust it this way. I shoot it on autofocus. I'll pick those spots out when I get up in the tree. Okay, right there. Might move it a little bit this way. It really helps having it right there. You almost can call it your right hand man there. It's basically move it and then make sure when you get up in that stand that I can actually shoot those lanes with the camera there. I've messed up many times. Here shows up there and I want to shoot. That's pretty darn close. You know, right there I can do it. And I have to know that I have to limit my shot there. And I hit, I've done it many times where I've hit the camera either on my draw or my letdown. Keep these things in mind and by all means, go with quality over something that's cheap and you're really gonna thank yourself in the quality of the product, which is the memory of your hunt. Hey guys, you know, the sun is out, the snow is finally gone, the birds are singing, it's a great spring day, but it doesn't mean we forget about deer season. Actually, I'm thinking about deer season year round, but today I'm getting some things ready so we can go prep some blind spots tomorrow. So we're well ready for when fall gets here, but we still have to think about scent control. So I'm gonna just, you know, the day before, I like to spray my boots down even though it's spring, I know that's a little bit overkill, but unpressured deer, they don't become unpressured in fall, they become unpressured right now.
remember, you can never be scent free enough. Your vehicle has a lot of odor in it and that's something you really have to take care of. Okay, now on to the food plot. You know, the most successful deer hunters I know are the guys and gals who take this serious year round. Yes, it's not hunting season, but the more attention to detail that you pay on scent control going in and out of your hunting areas throughout the year will really pay off in fall in more unpressured deer and closer encounters.